Hi, and welcome to Material Workflow Quick Start video for V-Ray for Revit. In this third video about materials, we'll go over some more advanced material workflows, including using the triplanar texture type, as well as using displacements. Now go ahead and launch Revit. Here we're using 2017. And load the project file materials3.rvt from the downloaded assets from this tutorial's webpage linked below. You'll be able to use this project with Revit versions 2015 and up. With the project loaded, click the V-Ray tab. We'll need to import some settings, so click Settings icon, then click on Sharing, and click Load Settings, and choose the materials3.xml file from the downloaded assets. Let's render this project, so set your current view to render and change resolution to crop region with a printer DPI of 75. Click render and let's see the result. Now we're going to address three things in this project, the concrete material on the chair, the plywood material on the table, and the feature wall material back here. So with the concrete, we're using a V-Ray material to create this look. V-Ray relies on Revit for the mapping of surfaces, and sometimes Revit has trouble with rounded surfaces like this chair. And with how this geometry was created, we're getting a lot of texture seams, as you can see. And with the sphere, you'll also notice pinching at the poles of the sphere as well. This is where the triplanar texture type will be most helpful. First, launch the Material Browser. Type in Concrete, and you'll see a Concrete Begin material that we can use. Expand this section and click here to launch the V-Ray Material Editor. This material already has a diffuse texture set up that we do want to keep. Right-click on the Map button and select Copy to copy this map to the clipboard. Then click the Map button normally, and on the bar where it says Bitmap, Click here and select the triplanar texture to replace the bitmap that we had used before. Now we need to put that concrete bitmap back onto the triplanar texture. So right click on the Texture X Map button and select Paste as Copy. This puts the map into this slot for the triplanar texture. What the triplanar texture does is it applies a texture as a plane in the three different axes X, Y, and Z. This could use the same texture in all three axes or different textures for any of the axes. Triplanar then seamlessly blends those textures on the three axes together onto the object. Let me demonstrate what that looks like. In the texture mode, select different texture on each axis and that allows us to insert something different for the Y and Z axes. I'm going to go ahead and pick blue and then green for each of these and then click back to get to the material to see the preview update to show how the triplanar is applying the textures and blending between them. Blue as you can see is on the top and the bottom, green is on the front and back and the concrete texture is on the left and right sides. Go back to the texture and switch it back to same texture on all axes to put the concrete texture back on all sides. Set the scale to 0.5 to increase the number of times it repeats. The material also has a glossiness map applied to it, so we need to do the same thing to that. First, back in the material, copy the map information by right-clicking the map button, then click it to access the texture. Change the bitmap to a triplanar and then right click the map button for texture X and paste the map back right onto it. Change the scale to 0.5 like we did for the diffuse texture. Click back and save the concrete material. In the VFB, select a region around the chair and render. Now that the triplanar texture is blending the concrete texture on the chair in all three axes, these edges are a lot nicer and there doesn't look to be any seams. Especially on the sphere, you can't see where the textures blend together at all, 
removing the issue of seams and pinching that we had before. Okay, now let's deal with the table here. In the Material Browser, type in Plywood and select the Plywood Table Material and click on Autogen to select and change that to V-Ray Material instead. Navigate to where you downloaded the tutorial assets and click Plywood.VRMAT. In the VFB, go ahead and select a region around the table, but before you render, let's look at the material first. It's been already set up for you as a triplanar. In the Material Browser, expand the Plywood Material and click to open the Material Editor. You can see the textures being used in the three different axes here, where we have an edge texture both for X and Z, and a texture for the face of the plywood for the Y axis. Close the Material Editor and render that region you selected around the table earlier. Now you can see we have a nice edge texture on the sides while the face texture looks great on the front of the table. The final thing to cover is going to be this feature wall. The wall has an undulating pattern to it that relies on a bump texture to simulate the undulations in the design. Now keep in mind, because this is a bump texture, it's a simulation of 3D. And you can see at the corner here that the wall is indeed flat and not actually textured. Now, using a displacement instead of a bump will actually make the surface dimensional for a great looking effect. Now you're going to want to use displacements sparingly as they will increase render times a little bit, but the effect is really quite impressive. In the Material Browser, search for Decorative and select the Gypsum Wallboard Decorative Material. Expand the UI and click to launch the Material Editor. You can see in the Basic tab here that there is a map applied to the bump. Click on the Advanced tab and expand the Maps section. You'll see the bump texture here as well, but also displacement right below it in the dialog. Right-click on the Map button for the bump and copy it. Paste it into the Displacement Map button. Turn off the checkbox for Bump and turn on the one for Displacement. Now, you can use bumps and displacements together using same or even different textures, but for our use here, we're just going to use a displacement. Decrease the multiplier for a displacement to 0.1 to reduce the effect on the wall. Save the texture in the file menu, but leave the material editor open for now. Select a region on the wall and click Render to see the displacement take effect. As you can see at the corner, there's now a dimensionality to the wall that there wasn't before. However, we see that the design isn't quite as detailed or smooth as we'd like it, and we have a few chunky shadows here and there. So, let's go back to the Material Editor. With Displacement Mapping, the Edge Length parameter helps define the detail in the final outcome. The shorter the Edge Length value is set, the more V-Ray will calculate a finer resolution to the resulting displaced geometry. Change the value from 4 to 1 and save the material, and then render that region again, and you'll see that the detail is smoother in the feature wall, and the splotches of shadow have gone away. It does slightly increase render times, so you want to be efficient with how you set the edge length for any displacement texture that you use. Go ahead and turn off region render for a final rendering. Set your quality to medium, and change the resolution to 150 dpi, and go ahead and render your view. As we elapsed the time for this render to resolve, we saw that by using the triplanar texture, we were able to create a more seamless material for the concrete chair, as well as a nicer plywood for the table. And displacements allowed us to create a dimensional look to this feature wall without needing to model the geometry for that effect. Thank you for joining us for this quick start video on more advanced material workflows in V-Ray 4 Revit.